Good morning. I'm Dr. Jerry Roseboom, a surgeon with OBGYN Associates. We are broadcasting live from a Unity Point Health St. Luke's Hospital operating room this morning. I'm a surgeon who performs gynecological robotic surgery here at St. Luke's. We wanted today to take you inside the operating room to talk to you more about Da Vinci robotic surgery. If you have a question, please feel free to post it as I talk and we can try to answer it during the time we have together this morning. Robotic surgery is not what some people think it is in that it's not like a true robot like R2-D2 or C-3PO walking into the room to do the surgery. Instead, it is a sophisticated computer system that is controlled by the surgeon doing the surgery and it allows the surgeon to do complex surgeries that otherwise would only be done on an open basis. So it is one of those tools that we use in surgery to enhance surgical care for the patient, but it is not truly a robot that comes into the room. Someday we may get there, but it may be a while before that does happen. The robotic system has two main advantages, the optical system and the articulation of the instruments. In other words, most laparoscopy involves two-dimensional optical systems. In other words, you don't have depth perception during the surgery, or at least not real good depth perception. So the Da Vinci robotic system is a three-dimensional optical system. And like I tell my patients when I'm explaining this to them, since I'm a gynecologist doing gynecological surgery, I'll be in the operating in the pelvis generally. And I say, it's like having my eyeballs in your pelvis without having my head in your pelvis. And that's probably a good thing that my head's not in your pelvis for both you and me. It also has the beauty of having articulation of the instruments. Regular laparoscopy just has small jaws on the end of the instruments. They don't really articulate or move around that much. So it's difficult to get into the nooks and crannies of the pelvis or the abdomen to do surgery. The robotic system is patterned after the human wrist. Our human wrists have 540 degrees of motion within them. The robotic system has 540 degrees of motion within it to allow us to do the surgery in those nooks and crannies more efficiently and more safely. So it allows us to do those surgeries uh, as, we were, as if we were doing them on an open basis. Now I've also had some questions which submitted to answer this morning, but first I wanted to tell you a little bit about robotic surgery at St. Luke's Hospital. We started performing robotic surgery here in around 2006. St. Luke's was the first hospital in Cedar Rapids to offer robotic surgery. And to date, myself as well as other robotically trained surgeons have performed over 5,000 robotic surgeries at St. Luke's Hospital. That's more than any other hospital in the state of Iowa and more than most hospitals in the Midwest in the country. Myself, I started doing robotic surgery gynecologically towards the end of 2007, the beginning of 2008. I've done over 2,600 cases during that time frame, and I started doing them mostly because I saw the advantages of robotics from a patient care standpoint, that being those optics and the articulation, and allowing me to offer over 99% of my patients now the minimally invasive surgery of robotic surgery for their gynecological situations. So once I started going with robotic surgery, it soon replaced most other forms of surgery that I was doing. And at this point, uh, I really am quite dedicated to robotic surgery. Back in 2009, St. Luke's Hospital and myself were designated as an epicenter training facility. And that involved having about 18 centers throughout the country being chosen to have other surgeons come in from around the country to observe the surgeries, to observe my technique and my partner's technique, as well as to observe our wonderful OR teams and efficiencies that we have at St. Luke's Hospital. And we've had over 640 surgeons to date from 44 states, I believe, come through as far away as Anchorage, Alaska, flying in to watch our surgeries. So we've been very successful at having a wonderfully efficient robotic program here at St. Luke's Surgery. Myself, most of my surgeries are hysterectomies, but we also take out fibroids, we do ovarian cyst removals, we operate on endometriosis, we operate on complex anatomy cases that involve 
pelvic relaxation where things are falling out essentially, pelvic prolapse and restoring that normal anatomy again in better ways than we used to do it because we didn't have the advantages of robotic surgery. So this is where I'd kind of like to show you a couple of the advantages of the optics and of the articulation of the instrument. So I'm going to sit down at the console for just a few minutes and show you a few things that to some degree mimics what I do with, with surgery. Now the robotic console over here is where I sit and that has six separate foot pedals that I operate on and hand controls that as I'm bouncing around with my feet and my hands, the computer takes those movements and translates it into small movements on what we, what we call the robotic arms themselves, uh, which are over here, um, what we're scanning in on right now. So I'm gonna sit down, and I typically take off my shoes when I sit down to do this because I've got big enough feet to hit all six foot pedals at once. Uh, but anyway, um, as I sit down, you'll begin to see the instruments moving. I can move the camera, as you can see, so we can get a better look at uh, the what we're operating on. And it just allows the, the delicacy of the instruments. We can take these little cones and slip them up on to this, or over here on that if it fits, or over here. So you can do a variety of things that are very delicate with this. Um, you can take, they've got a paper clip that looks like laying here. You can take the pick that up and bring that again over to in a variety of different places and move it around. You can switch over to different hands. You can, uh, in other words, you can really move around a person's pelvis. You can see how the articulation of the instruments is like having my fingers and my hands in the, in the patient's pelvis. As far as suturing goes, uh, it is one of the advantages that robotics it allows you to suture as if you are um, have an open case with a couple of needle drivers. So for example, we can try and go right through these two little holes in the in this little, uh, uh, or put a new hole in it there if we want to. And you can see we pull it through, and then we come over here, and again, this is how we typically would suture. Bring in the suture over here, and you can just spin it a couple of times, and after a while you begin to get reasonably quick with this. So you spin it that way, then we'll spin it this way and begin to show you can tie different things. So again, it allows us to suture very efficiently. If you get better and faster, you can go move along a little bit more. So um, it just allows you to do things that you just can't do. It's got a little scissors in it so we can cut the suture. Now this particular suture is sometimes difficult to cut, but the type, type I chose, I wanted to be able to show you the different uh, colors of it. Uh, but you can cut the suture. And so again, you do a variety of different things here. There's a big ring down here you can go and pick up again. You just it really just allows you to do so many different things that you just can't do very efficiently with uh, regular laparoscopic surgery. So that's just a brief, brief demonstration of some of the tools that we use uh, for the robotic surgery. Um, I have some other questions that were uh, given to us and one of them was, what are the benefits of robotic surgery? Well, I've been speaking to that to some degree but the real benefits are allowing complex surgeries to be performed with a form of minimally invasive surgery. Minimally invasive surgery is the key term that nowadays most surgeries, at least in gynecology and general surgery as well, should, are performed as a minimally, minimally invasive surgical case. And the robotic surgery, I think, is the epitome of minimally invasive surgery. It allows us to do surgeries that I just found myself not doing as well or as easily with regular laparoscopic surgery. And the, another question that was asked is, what do patients say about robotic surgery? Well, they're intrigued by the technology. Technology obviously has uh, affected our lives in almost every aspect of our lives. But they, uh, I have a, a video at, at St. Luke's website uh, of a surgery uh, that I usually encourage them to go watch before the surgery so that they get an idea of how robotic surgery works. Afterwards, the recovery is so quick compared to the regular surgery that the things they tell me is that it's very easy to recover from in general. They're usually back to work in two to three weeks, sometimes one week. The pain levels are far less than open surgery, Motrin and Tylenol, maybe a few narcotics here and there. Um, so again, they, they, I've had only positive reports back about robotic surgery. Certainly, each patient is different and it varies from patient to patient, but in general, it's, it's really been a very positive thing. Another question was, what should I ask 
my doctor before they have their robotic surgery performed? Well, in general, regular surgical questions, you know, what are the complications of the surgery? How long does the surgery take? Um, what do I anticipate for recovery? Uh, what do you think as a surgeon about robotic surgery? Um, even if they have somewhat less experience, at least in our group, uh, we operate together. And so we have two of the surgeons usually operating, so that allows our younger surgeons who are really getting proficient very quickly to have the advantage of having one of the more experienced surgeons in the room to help them and guide them to the surgery. So we find that that is really a wonderful way for our group at least to uh, facilitate our younger partners uh, gaining that experience that some of us maybe not so young partners um, have had the privilege of, uh, of gaining over the years. Another question is what changes in robotic surgery have you seen since I've been doing robotics? Well, like most technology, we've already been through three or four different generations of the robot. Uh, we started out with uh, something, well, the names aren't important, but we started out with the first generation that was a little more cumbersome. The newer generations are just a bit more efficient, better optics, better articulation with the instruments, and smaller incisions, they're easier to work to work with and there's new technology coming out even that uh, will simplify the surgery in some ways even more. I see robotic surgery, one of the questions was well, where is robotic surgery going to go in the next 10 or 15 years or so? Well like most technology it is going to continue to be used more and more within the surgical fields. The Da Vinci robotic system is the only robotic system in gynecology at least in general surgery that is really been adopted throughout the country and throughout the world, frankly. And it is a very elegant, elegant system. But I do see that in the next 10 or 15 years, we will have, and maybe in the next two or three years, we'll have some advances where there are fewer incisions in some situations, um, smaller instruments uh, doing the same thing that we're doing now. And I would suspect someday, just like you're seeing the automation, the automotive industry, uh, we will have a true robot walk in the room, possibly doing the surgery while I'm having a cup of coffee. It probably won't be during my generation of uh, doing surgery, but, but I do see that someday being a possibility. Well, that is a brief overview of robotic surgery and the advantages that I've seen in the last 10 years in almost 3,000 cases of doing uh, uh, robotics that, that I have the privilege of, uh, of using and, and uh, applying to my patient care. And I thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any other questions, please feel free to post them to Facebook to this Facebook post or visit the unitypoint.org/robotics to learn more. Thank you.